As a peer, and when it comes to men, you know how I feel. I want a real man. Give me a real man, you know what I mean. I want a real man. Oh, real man, you know what I need. Hey, what's up? All the rockets. Hey, Tim Steves here. Welcome to Real Men. This is the show where men get real. We've got a great panel here today, so let's introduce them. We have Jean Paul is What's with up? us. How you What's doing, up? Jean Paul? How you doing, Tim? What's going Good to on, see baby? you, JP. We also have Lori Elliott in the building. Hello. She's always fun to have around. And Dwayne Hill is here, the effervescent Dwayne Hill. I am chilling and, and illing. And Tim Reichert is going to do a commentary on risk takers and daredevils. And you might ask yourself, why Reichert on risk takers? Well, let's roll a clip from what he considers a vacation with his wife. Let's check it out. We understand that the volcano erupts about every, once every 10 years. Last time it erupted was 1986. It's 1998 now. It's about two years overdue to blow. But uh, hopefully we're going to get up there and uh, get a look inside before it blows our head off. We made it! Woo! <laughs> you gotta get lower. He's posing for a little picture. Careful though, man. Jesus Christ, you're on close to This is the part of the videotape I won't be able to show my grandmother. <laughs> Whoa! Whoa! That's so hot. Oh my god. Did you see how high this shit? That was some shit. That was some scary shit. I want to get the hell out of here. I don't... Nobody told me. Oh, by the way, it spits fire every once in a while. Better get the hell out of town now. <laughs> Man, that's a vacation. I don't know, Timmy. Let's hear from Reichert on the play. What's up, Tim? What do other people do on their vacations? I don't know. I'm here to answer the question, why do I do that? Why? Why? My grandmother asks. Why? My mother asks. Why can't I find a way to have fun without putting my life in danger? I wonder why, too. Well, I look to science for the answer. What science told me is that there's a chemical in our body that is specifically there for one reason only, and that is to act, react to peril. Danger, immediate terror, it's there for that. We don't have that anymore. There was a time in our history when we were attacked by lions and tigers and bears, and we needed that adrenaline right there, quick, boom. We don't need that anymore, but the adrenaline is still there. We have to fix that. It's like, it's like a Nick fix. We have to go out and get the danger for us. That is why I do it. I don't have a death wish. I don't want to die, but if I do die, where do I want to be? Ground zero volcano eruption. That's how I want to go. Instant vaporization. How do you want to go? I'm tired of answering the question, why do I like to do that? Am I insane? I stood on top of a mountain at 14,000 feet, looked into a hole into the center of the earth. I felt and heard and smelt the earth breathe. You haven't done that? Are you insane? What do you think, Timmy? Oh, well, you make an argument. I don't buy it. I'm staying home. I'm going to watch it on TV. <laughs> Brought a good clip. What do I need to go for? What do you think, Lori? Do you think you have to put your life in danger for a few kicks or what? You know, I like a beach with a good book <laughs> and about six to 12 rum and cokes. And a shark attack. <laughs> and no shark attack. Oh. I won't even go five feet into the ocean anymore because of all the shark attacks. I'm totally not like that. Do you have any thrill-seeking thing at all? Like, is there any, you like going fast on a bicycle? On a... I used to. I used to dive. And I, that was the biggest thrill in the world, was diving off a high, <laughs> you know, diving off of 10 meters and stuff. But then I started wiping out. <laughs> and that really cured me of that thrill. And, and ever since then, now I associate thrill with pain. And uh, I, can't, uh, I can't break that connection. Good job. Can't do it. What about you, Jean-Paul? Um, I think it's crazy, personally. Um, Tim was talking about adrenaline here, and I think adrenaline is for being able to run fast to get your ass out of whatever situation you're frightened of. So I think right. it, it, it's But to, we don't have those run. situations anymore in, in our natural lifestyle. We used to have to run from lions and tigers and bears all the time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all the time. Northern Every Ontario, day, lion, a tiger, lion, a bear, lion one the other. country up there in Sudbury. <laughs> Who's kidding who? We ran from cows, you know? Yeah. <laughs> Adrenaline was like our only drug back then, too. It was like, you know, Tim, uh, the cave's really getting drab. We had a rocket in my head a couple of times. <laughs> oh, God, the, the endorphins, the adrenaline. This is, oh, pot. 
<laughs> See, but what about day on the street, though? Da at, late at night, you can get somebody pulling a gun on you, and then all of a sudden that adrenaline kicks in, I and think... it's not as fun as snowboarding down a volcano. Exactly. Unless <laughs> you know it, sh I mean? it shot well. No. <laughs> <laughs> No, I mean, the whole thing with walking on the street at night, though, that's our, our, I mean, that really is our primitive brain receptors going, wait, someone wants to eat my precious vital organs, you know? Like, it's us being afraid of the unknown as opposed mm -hmm. to the known. Let's be, you're, you're pretty safe in, you know, in basically in Canada. I mean, if you're walking on the streets of Buenos Aires with a, you know, I don't know, with a thong, maybe you're in more <laughs> trouble, but... You know, here, you know. But I mean, you say it's known and unknown, but I mean, you climb up the, the however tall, how tall was that volcano? 14,000 feet. 14,000 oh, feet, man. it's still unknown. You don't know that's going to erupt. Well, I'm saying it's unknown. I'm saying up. walking on the street at night, you kind of know that. You I know. think the scariest part of that adventure for Reichert is walking to the top of that bad boy. Yeah, that was my <laughs> biggest. Leading up to it, it was like, I'm not afraid of what happens when I get up there. I'm afraid if I can get my ass up there. It was a five hour hike straight up, yeah. of constant hiking. And I'm the laziest man in the world. <laughs> but, Obviously not. Well, but that draw for that adventure, for that, like that, that was and remains today the most amazing moment of my life. I can't, I'll never top that moment ever. I'll never have a feeling like that. And I don't understand uh, any other way of living other than seeking that out. Uh, I raised a family of wolves. And <laughs> that was one of, I mean, breastfeeding was very painful because I have sensitive nipples, obviously. Come oh, on, Dwayne. Dwayne. Oh, what? No, I'm Dwayne. seriously. Come on, as far as thrills go, as far as thrills go, my biggest thrill was going I went to Area 51. I went to Area 51, the base that doesn't exist, and I got chased off by security, and I have it on tape, and I shriek like a girl, security! <laughs> <laughs> Security, coming. We started driving fast. He started following us. I was absolutely terrified. So I'm like a typical Canadian pussy. <laughs> so I'm one of those, just put another word in there. <laughs> nice guy. When? <laughs> uh, but, but, you know, I'm, I, honestly, as soon as Security showed up, I was like, ah, and I just drove as fast as I could. Don't look behind us. If they see us, look, then they'll know fear, and then they'll kill us and eat our young, you know? But what so. about daredevils, though, like the people that climb Mount Everest and that jump out of planes from this height, then this height, then this height, then with a parachute, then with no parachute, then with like and a, with a snowboard. You know, piece of saran think... wrap. And yeah. I think that's crazy. I think I, that's I, crazy too. And I don't Why, know, I don't, wait a minute. Now I should be offended, r literally offended here, right? Because that's what I do all the time. That you kind jump of out of thing. a plane with a oh, piece of saran wrap? I certainly would. If it was a <laughs> sport, <laughs> if, you if it was a thing people were doing and only once in a while someone died doing it, yeah. Have I you parachuted? With a thrill. No, but I want to. Well, you got a parachute. I do. Have you? you? Yes. Several well, then times. you must I understand the thrill. Why well, you the thing about parachuting is the fact that even if you, it's not even to do with being afraid of heights, it has to do with being afraid of jumping out of a plane. Yeah. It's nothing with heights. You're sitting on the edge of a plane, a perfectly good plane, you're like, I, 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 ah! And you step out of it. So that is a huge, huge thrill. And if you could, like, but I mean, trust me, if there was a capsule that kind of tasted minty that gave you the same rush, I wouldn't do it. Let's wrap this up. John Paul, take us to commercial with a final thought, man. I think personally, I don't want to make it a racial thing, but culturally, <laughs> white people are crazy. And I have never, ever heard of a daredevil named Leroy Knievel. <laughs> yes, for, uh, for many women, yes, in the, in the restaurant industry. How do you like working for a female boss? I, I have no problems. Um, the touching I had a little problem with, but other than that. Oh, yeah, you were harassed? Um, I wouldn't say harassed, but just, you know. The emotional scars are there. Though. They're there. Hey, welcome back to Real Men. Right now, we're joined by a very special guest, sex columnist from iWeekly magazine, Sasha, joins us. Thanks for coming in. No problem. Uh, but before we get to the conversation and uh, talk to Sasha, let's have, uh, let's have a commentary by Lori Elliott. Lore? Hi. Okay, for this segment, we are going to be carefully wading through the mucky swampland that is sexual harassment. I hope you brought your rubbers. <laughs> But I meant rubber boots. I said swampland, not sex land. <laughs> Keep your pants on. <laughs> See how easy it can happen? But more specifically, we're going to be discussing relationships and sexual harassment in the workplace. Now, is flirting in the workplace a form of sexual harassment? Where do we draw the line? And how often do women in the workplace feel pressure, and I mean major pressure, to sleep with their bosses just so they can get that promotion? And similarly, if a guy's in the same situation with a female boss, does he look at it the same way as a woman? Or is he more like, okay, let me get this straight. You mean I get a promotion and I get laid? <laughs> You're kidding me, right? I think you'd be surprised. But we're going to just talk right now about relationships in the workplace and flirtation in the workplace. And hopefully Sasha will clue us all in on some things we've never even thought about. Back to you, Tim. Jeez. Thanks, Laura. Nicely done. Setting the table 
for discussion. That's the that's the job here. Good job, Lori. Welcome, Thank Sasha. Thanks for coming in. Yeah, great. Thanks for having me. Hey, Sash. Welcome to the couch. Hello. <laughs> so, uh, what do you think? Can you start us off? What are the big questions that need to be answered? Um, I just, you know, the thing is, is that flirting is such a natural thing that we we as human beings do, and many of us can't relate to other people unless we're flirting with them. We simply cannot talk to other people unless we're flirting. Um, but the problem with the workplace, I think, and I think it's entirely inappropriate to flirt in a workplace only because you never know how it's going to be taken. And it's entirely up to the person who's being, being flirted with how they are going to receive that. Mm -hmm. And so it's an extremely touchy thing to do in an office. Not well, like right now, yeah. John Paul's pretty much coming on to you over yeah. there with the arm oh, around yeah. you. Like, how's yeah. that I working? I so agree that, that, that touching it, yeah. Oh, yeah. No, and that's, my lawyer, I'm sure, is watching this as we speak and is writing. <laughs> <you> know, <laughs> compiling the evidence. He's compiling the evidence We've got and no all of that stuff. we got to get his seed. But see, here is the problem. Herein lies the problem, is that uh, anytime there is some sort of movement, and I mean, sexual harassment was not the same in the workplace before. You look at a film like The Apartment, starring Shirley MacLaine, where it was de rigueur for a woman to be patted on the ass, um, be having sex with her boss, and be placed in an extremely precarious position. Oh, the old days. I know. <laughs> Darling, I know. Uh, and, and, and have her job. What about it, Dwayne? Or do you miss those days? Oh, God. You know what? I used to run uh, Dwayne Enterprises. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Uh, take some dictation, please. Uh, don't worry so much about the tation. Oh. <laughs> I say. And uh, sell something ribald, and then I'd mention my zipper was broken. Oh. Oh, do meeting. No, you know, Come on now. I mean, basically, okay, it, maybe it doesn't get advertised, but I think it happens, and I think flirting is used for pros and cons. You know, I think that, uh, I think that women know how to use their sexuality. Men are total goofballs. Let's face it, we're dogs. You can straight, you can, t I mean, we respond to any sort of stimuli. We do. You can tie a guy to a chair, get a big Italian mob shirt, and rub his balls, and eventually you're going to have something. <laughs> We have are, you done that? Guys. Have you done that? You don't know. Oh, listen, Fat Tony was a <laughs> <laughs> That man made me the best gnocchi. I'm not Sasha, hanging out is it overblown, anymore. though? Is it, are we too PC now? Again, have we gone too political correct? Every time there is some sort of movement towards something, and we, we work as a society in a pendulous fashion, we will fly towards one end of the spectrum. Mm -hmm. um, and then we have to sort of scramble and clamor to keep up with it. But eventually, I'm sure what will happen is the pendulum will swing more towards the middle, will become less hysterical about it, mm -hmm. and who knows how long that will take. But I do think the office is an inappropriate place to flirt because it is a construct. Is right. that because the pendulum's over here now, or is the office okay when the pendulum's in the middle? You know, it's, it, and I don't think flirting is inappropriate, but because it could be taken in so many different ways, it's really mm. a risky right. thing. But to aren't, aren't there other things that could be taken? Aren't there do. other things that could be taken in the wrong way other than flirtation, like just... Uh, I can't even come up with an example right now, but, there's, <laughs> but no, there's, there's things that people can be offended well, by for other example, than sexual when you flirtation. Offered to, you know, yeah. kiss my neck backstage. I didn't take that wrong uh, at all. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I didn't flirted with you. Wow. This did, just did. Right? I didn't know you were on the show, though, so we're it's getting new information here. Yeah, workplace. I, I, I don't know. With you, but Let's go to okay, one at a time. One at a time. No, Lori, what do you think? I haven't got off here, and I think that. I think you just cannot, cannot take flirtation out of the workplace, no matter how people take it the wrong way or whatever. So many great relationships I know have started in the workplace. And if you take that flirtation away, people have to go back to meeting their spouses at bars and horrible places like that where you never meet the right person. You never get to know the right person. Flint publications, right there. Yeah. Flint publications. And as far as, as, far as people... No flirting, that place is as boring as a monastery. You throw in a little bit of flirtation, it's towel fights and uh, nude whipped cream. I think people just need to basically, whoever is being... If you're not comfortable with someone's advances, whether they be in jest or whether they be serious, I think it's up to the person who's being approached to say, hey, look, you know what, I'm not cool with that, oh, and, and everything be cool. Yeah, yeah I did, think can everyone, she, people Hold on, Lori, do women have a responsibility here or what? What for for accepting? What, well, workplace in, workplace flirting. I mean, it takes two to tango. Flirting goes both ways. It does, ways. Uh, of course. I think it does for sure. And uh, I don't know if this is addressing that question specifically, but I was I was called a player hater a while back, I'm and sorry that about was that, uh, <laughs> I wasn't going to say any names, but it was him, and uh, and it was for the fact that I resent women who use their sexuality to climb up their corporate right. ladder because. You know, and if and, and I've heard other people say that that's okay. Use what you've got and all that kind of stuff. Well, until it's your job that they're taking. You, you know? know what? Okay, it was my job, and let me speak up now because I got <laughs> passed over. No, I got passed over in the workplace by a woman who got promoted beyond me because she was sleeping with my boss. She got not not a woman, me got 
bump by me, not another woman, bump, bump by me, sleeping with the boss. Now, two months later, that boss and that girl were both fired from the company yes. because she shouldn't have been promoted to that position. <laughs> And he was a bad manager. So it takes care of itself is what I'm saying. All right, okay, we're running, we're sure, out of time. We're sure. out of time right now. Sasha, thanks for coming in. You want to stay? Can you, you got a few minutes? Can yes, you hang? Please. One more segment? We need, stay. we haven't covered Sasha enough, so that to speak. That was a great We're segment. coming right back on Real Men. It's a great speech you made. Yeah, Daddy. How you doing? Welcome back to Real Men. Sasha stayed with us, which is really cool. She's the sex columnist for iMagazine. John Paul, what's up? We're talking monogamy this segment. Um, yeah, as a as a wood, I think it's a great wood. And uh, no, um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, as far as monogamy goes, I find a lot of women slag a lot of guys and say, "Oh, guys are dogs, and guys don't know how to stay faithful and stuff like that." And uh, guy, why do guys cheat? And why do guys cheat? And I think guys cheat. Not because we're dogs or we mean to be malicious with it. I just think that when you get into a relationship with a woman, what happens is she accepted you for who you are when you guys first met and you did all the things you needed to do. And then you get in the relationship and she tries to change the person that she fell in love with and you just want to find someone who appreciates you for you. Sasha, you look like you disagree with that. <laughs> well, <laughs> there's the whole issue of the presentation. You presented yourself as someone different, and it's not that this woman is trying to change you. She's only just expecting um, you to live up to the standards that you alleged to have. Actually, it's a little bit of both. But it's a little bit of both. People, it's a little yeah, bit of both. Exactly. I think people hear what they want to hear in a relationship. If you've ever gone through a bad breakup, you know that. Like, yeah. I still love you. I just don't we can go out anymore. He still loves me. That means I can send the doll covered in blood. You know, I, I mean, and, let's, and if you want to go to a bit more basic level, we're hunter gatherers. Men are hunter yeah. gatherers. The, I mean, without getting too graphic. No, we're hunters. Women are the gatherers. Women are the, no, uh, no. we're hunter gatherers society. That's right. Sorry, we're hunters. We hunt and we we kill. And we go. Look, I got blood on my face. Ah, laughing, bones coming out of my nose. But I mean, and if you want to go down to the whole physics of it, the uh, the penis is plunger shaped because it's supposed to withdraw, you know, other people's sperm out of it because you just go over, you attack, you hump, and you run. Whoa. And we're adapting to a culture Tim, that's Tim. Okay, okay. you know what? Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Timmy, what the hell is Dwayne talking about? I, I wish I knew. Dwayne, you need to take my seminar. Yeah. I'll fix your screwed up head in two weeks. But <laughs> it's a great seminar. You'll do well by it. But I, I, I think that uh, I have a problem discussing this issue on any other term, on people who, who negate the scientific aspect of what Dwayne was just talking about. Mm -hmm. It is designed to pull the other man's sperm out of there, and we are designed to spread our seed. It's instinct in us. And I don't, I understand, like, some women understand that, but they don't accept it. And, they, and I'm not saying accept it means you have to accept that, that your man's going to cheat on you all the time. I'm saying you have to accept that your man's going to have to fight like hell to not cheat on you all the time. And it's not, it's not something that's in us. It, it bothers me that women don't understand that there's something in us that they can't feel themselves. Because we understand the thing in you that we can't feel ourselves, which is the fact that, you know, men are delusional who think that women can't control their emotions Lori, when they're yeah. menstrual. Lori, no, can I, you please tell me, what the hell is Tim talking about? I, th I, I understand <laughs> what Tim's talking about completely, because there is that dis statistic that, that I think we've all read, one in ten mammals can stay faithful and stuff like that. I, and I understand that men are completely different, like completely different, and you, you, there's no change in that, and that's fine. But the thing is, my, my head understands that. But at the same time, my heart with my boyfriend, I would die. I'd be course. so upset if he That's ever did something like that. Just to clear the air, my penis is not shaped like a plunger. <laughs> no, <laughs> it's, it's, let's hear from Sasha here. We got the guest in here. We're not yeah. letting her talk at all. I understand the compulsion to be non-monogamous. It's quite obvious, and I have that compulsion at times myself. The problem not that, like men. No, women, I women who say that, that I hey, I get horny too. No, not like men. You yeah, have no idea. I realize idea. that. Yeah. My problem with the way that we deal with um, monogamy and non-monogamy now is that we we really um, we place a lot of importance on it. People end up lying and cheating and hurting people and doing things that are dangerous. That is the problem I have with people who cheat when they put their partner's health in jeopardy. I agree. Are you referring um, that yes. is the major problem I have yes. with it. Absolutely. I have minor yes. problems with lying and deceiving people. I wish that we could have non-monogamous relationships with one another and work it out that way. I do have a major problem with somebody jeopardizing my health. Major. Why can't, why can't, why can't we have non-monogamous relationships? We can. I know people who we can if women would be into it. 
Yeah, I don't, I don't yeah, but women ain't into it. Men, take a hypnosis course. It's more complicated than that, though, because men have to, we all have to learn how to be ethical in non-monogamous relationships. It takes an, an enormous amount of negotiating, sure. as much as a monogamous relationship yeah. does. We need to learn how to negotiate them, and it's a lot of work. But, the, but you, most guys can't even bring the issue up to their girlfriend or wife exactly. or whatever, because it, it, it's not even in their realm of what okay. they would they should agree with that person. Hold this, if we're out of time for this segment. Oh. Sasha, can you hang around? One more, t one yes, more segment. We'll absolutely. let you talk next segment. A little bit more. Dwayne, we throw us to commercial, man? Uh, monogamy, what uh, final thought? Monogamy, the reason we have to negotiate is because sheep aren't that good looking. Out. <laughs> You're a good guy. You're an yeah. honest guy. Yeah. You're not out there fooling around. You're a pretty loyal guy? I guess so. Yeah, you could say that. Yeah, that's <laughs> a tough one. It's going on TV, baby. Oh, really? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so you're Hey, how about a hand for the band? Welcome back to Real Men, and we've had a great show today. We've had Sasha, sex columnist from the eye, in with us. We've been talking about monogamy. Timmy, we've got about a minute and a half left. What do you think? You're, you're the married guy. I'm the married guy. I'm in a monogamous relationship, and I'm living my... <laughs> it doesn't roll off your tongue, does it? Like most men, I live my entire life in the service of the female agenda, which is monogamy. So give us a break. That's <laughs> what I'm saying. They've got to make that word simpler. Instead of saying, I'm monogamous, you just got to go, I'm so good. Not the face. Not I'm whipped. we got a word for it. I'm whipped. whipped. And you know, I'm as monogamous as fashion dictates, really. You know, if a plus size men come back in style, sorry, ladies. Laura, I'm not taking last any thought from Laura. I think that children should be, women should be taught what men are really like earlier on so that they don't have these preconceptions of men being exactly like them. You're Teach right. it in the schools. Let them know early. What's up, JP? Monogamy and love have absolutely nothing to do with anything. Okay, and take that for whatever you want. Nice. Let's save the last 45 seconds for Sasha, our guest. I agree with Lori. We should be taught earlier. And uh, I think, you know, I'm willing in, in the next time I get into a relationship to maybe try a non-monogamous commitment. I know it's going to be very difficult, but it's incredibly heartbreaking going through all of that mm. stuff with somebody. It's very, very heartbreaking. So I would rather try to keep it open. I'm willing. I'm willing to try it. Very wow. cool. Wow. Yeah. Nice They're willing to give it a shot. Group yeah. hug. Well, it's better than all this denial yes. and anxiety. Lying. And everything and like I agree. That, and if yeah. cloning takes off, you know, then we don't have to worry about any of this, you know, crap. <laughs> well, then fine. I'll just get you wife number two. No, honey. Nicely I'm done. I'm still I, forward. I, I'm still I want to thank all the guests today and, of course, Sasha and all the guys for stopping by. Yay, You've been watching Sasha, Real Men. We're back next you. time. Thanks a lot. Yay. Oh, nice job, you guys. That was a show. Great sex. Give me a real man.